They say this car is the dark side of green. Is it dark or just a little out of focus? Let's drive the 2011 Lexus CT200H and check the tech. You can't spend less and buy a new Lexus. And you can't spend less to feed one either. This is the least expensive, highest MPG car they make. But where it fits can be kind of a puzzle. It's a small car, but not a tiny car. Sporty looking, but not a sports car. It's a Lexus, but without most of their upmarket perfume, whether that's good or bad. And in this metallic yellow, it's impossible to miss, but kind of hard to put your finger on. Okay, here's the cabin of a CT. It's a very different layout than your typical Lexus. Much more sporty, not so much leisurely comfortable, though the materials are great, the layout is real nice. My favorite thing, it's really low tech, is this layback console right here. This is great ergonomics. It's exactly the angle your hand comes to it. A lot of other cars now have this flat face or almost this canted thing or a little pot belly stove like Mercedes, and it's this weird tortured thing to operate them. Only these guys, and I think Audi, do this really nice sort of a shallow layback. It makes using it really easy. Okay, I know you're asking, what the hell is that thing? Uh, this is one of those weird little Prius doohickeys where you kind of have a weird pattern. It's up to the left for reverse. Middle over here on the gate is neutral. Uh, over and down to the left is drive, and then down without over to the left is drive with additional regen braking. Yeah, I know. Oh, and the button for park is right below it. I thought it was the parking brake. That threw me for about five minutes in a dark garage the first time I drove it. Over here is EV mode. These are all related. This means drive electric as much as you can. This big knob looks like a media controller or something, but there's no LCD, no big menu. No, that guy is a lot of real estate for just a couple functions. Go to the right, you're in sport mode. Go to the left, you're in this eco mode where it uses the least amount of fuel and energy, or just hit it to go back to normal. We don't have the navigation system in our car. That would be comprised of a pop-up motorized LCD. Instead, we have this basic head unit, which is a Lexus audio unit, not Levinson. These guys do a lot of Levinson audio, but not available in a CT. You either get a base six speaker system or an improved system with 10 speakers and better amps, but nothing too fancy available on this car. Sources are AM and FM without HD radio, your satellite radio's right there. CD and AUX takes you either to your multi-disc changer up here, it's a slot feed one at a time, or Bluetooth audio streaming. I've also got my USB and AUX jack right here. Right now I've got my iPod hooked up with a stock white cable. No special cable needed like on Hyundai and Kia. And you can see it does what it can with a small display. Not a lot going on there. Now speaking of screens, we have a rear view camera, but no LCD. Let's move the uh, putter over here and you see it pops up in the left side of the mirror. Not totally uncommon. This one's really bright and very sharp, I think, compared to others I've seen. Speaking of Presto Changeo, a little bit of that happens on the dash, not just with the rear view cam. Back to our drive mode knob. If I go to sport, look what happens on the left here. The left gauge goes from being a draw or recharge gauge, instead goes to being an RPM meter. They call that a tachometer, I guess. And it changes a bunch of lighting to red because you're in sport mode. Hit normal again and it goes back to being the other deal. And you see we have a bunch of EV indicators here. The one on the far left tells me right now the car's prepared to run stealthy and silent, electric only. The other one on the top says I'm in EV mode, which tells the car to do that EV thing as often as it can. Gets a little busy up there. Now as part of the premium audio package, which we have, the better speakers and amps, we also get an interesting sort of a non-related mix of the glass roof overhead with the power pullback shade, and we also get heated seats up front. Now the CT has kind of a little people mover look, but it's not a terribly spacious cargo hauler. Back here under your little hatch, and notice how low this guy is, quite a low profile car. You've got your lift up on top of the flat load floor, but again, it's a fairly small cargo space. This lifts up, I can toss that. Here's a little organizer, a little foam thing, pull that out. Here is your uh, funny spare and some other tools. Ah, and there's the battery. If you're wondering where it is, again, this is a purpose-designed car to be a hybrid, so it didn't take up space that was used for something else before it was a hybrid. It kind of wedges in here behind the second seat, and this is your emergency pull right there. If there's an accident, that's how they disconnect the high voltage. Okay, any hybrid that comes from Lexus, Toyota, or any combination thereof always gets the question, isn't it just a Prius? 
Well, kinda. This is basically a Prius powertrain, 1.8 liter Atkinson cycle, in other words, really lean at the expense of torque, inline four, sitting side saddle, high compression, by the way, 13 to one, made it up with an electric motor, of course. Total is 134 scrawny horsepower and 142 relatively unimpressive foot-pounds of torque. That's why this relatively small car takes almost 10 seconds to get to 60. It is not sporty in its acceleration. It's more sporty in its handling, as we'll find out. Mileage, though, is really good. This is the sippinest of all the Lexi out there. 43 city, 40 highway. And, of course, it's only available front-wheel drive, only available with that little doohickey CVT continuously variable transmission. Let's go for a ride. The CT Hybrid is a nice handling little car, solid build, very smooth, it doesn't come across as just some Prius in drag, but it's not terribly spirited either, regardless of where that silver knob is turned. Responsiveness is of a continuum, which is good, some hybrids can't pull that off, but exciting to drive might be a reach. Alright, so here's the Lexus that cost the least to buy and should cost the least to run, so what does it cost? 30 grand is your base, 29,995 with destination. Now, on top of that, to go CNET style, you got to add the premium package. That gives you the CD changer, more and better speakers, better amps, uh, the home link remote, glass moonroof, and heated seats. Then there's the nav package for 2445. Retractable LCD, hard drive GPS nav, traffic and weather, some enhanced Bluetooth, and of course then the rear view camera shows up on the big LCD. Your last option for $1,500 is a pre-collision system which will tighten up your seat belts and pre-position the brakes for a panic stop that it sees coming that you might not.